Okay, in this video, I'm going to be going through Anthropic's Claude 2 and how to use it with Langchain. And we'll do a couple of different examples of using it with Langchain for a conversational bot where you've got a search tool and also for some rags, some retrieval augmented generation. So basically using a vector store to get information out and then have Claude to take in that information. And don't forget, one of the advantages with Claude 2 is it's got a 100K context. We're not going to use anywhere close to that. But rather than just having, say, three documents coming in, we can actually pass in a lot more for this. Okay, so let's get started. So you will need an Anthropic API key. These are actually pretty hard to come by at the moment, but you would just put this in if you've got this. My guess is that they will open up over time. And once you've got this in there, you'll then be able to use it just like you would with OpenAI. And in the last video, I looked at the pricing compared to OpenAI. And it's actually very competitive to a lot of the offerings that OpenAI is offering. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is that we basically use the Claude 2 model as a, a chat model. So in Langchain, we have just completion models and chat models. So they're using this new not so new now, but they're using this chat sort of message format. So first off, we need to basically bring in the system message, the AI message, the human message for this. So this is actually the same as what you would do with uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, with GPT 4, etc. We can then basically bring in the Claude model. So here we're just bringing in the chat anthropic Claude model, and then we can just define a human message uh, and send it up. Now, now, in this case, I'm not defining any system message or any of that sort of thing. I'm basically just bringing it in and putting in a human message. And you can see, sure enough, if I ask it, how do you compare to GPT-4? It will give us an answer back. Now, it is very interesting, the answers that you get back from this. Certainly, Claude 2 is not perfect by any means, but it, it does seem that it seems to be more honest when it doesn't know things. So there are definitely hallucinations. I'm not saying there aren't, but I, I do find that you'll see, especially when we look at the information retrieval stuff later on in the video, that it actually brings out some really nice uh, uses of the model where it tends to basically say if it's not sure or give more sort of answers that are built just upon the context of what, what it, the information that it's given. Okay, so this is basically a, a, just a standard generation out. If we want to build a chatbot and incorporate some memory into the chatbot and search into the chatbot, this is how we would do it. So we're going to still use the chat anthropic model and we're going to use Claude 2. I'm going to set temperature to be zero in this case. We're going to have a conversational buffer going on here. And for a tool for search, I'm just using DuckDuckGo in here, just basically it's free. You don't need an API key for this. You can just use it uh, straight out. So you can see that because this is a tool, we're actually gonna end up using a React chain here. We need to give the tool a name and we need to give it a description. So I've taken the, those from the sort of Langchain standards that they use for the Google search engine. They'll work fine for this. You could also play around with this yourself if you wanted to have a specific use case for it. All right, setting up the actual agent. So we're going to pass in the tools. In this case, it's just one tool. We're going to pass in the LLM. I'm going to tell the agent type is it's a conversational chat, right? So it's using the chat format and it's a React description agent in this case. So meaning that it's using the React template. I've covered this before in the past. So my guess is if you've watched a few of my videos, you've probably seen this. Okay, so I've set verbose to be true here just so we can see what's going on. If we start out just asking a, a simple thing, hi, I'm Sam, you can see it actually has the personality built in, right? Hi, Sam, nice to meet you. I'm Claude, an assistant created by Anthropic to be helpful, harmless, and honest. So you'll see these three words used a lot, both in this, but also in the data sets and stuff. So, okay, I, I've picked the topic of the day to be Elon Musk announcing this week about his x.ai. So I ask it, what is Elon Musk's x.ai? And you can see, sure enough, the React kicks in. We're not having any problems with the sort of reasoning on the React chain. It's returning stuff back, which Langchain can then pass quite easily. And it basically decides that it needs to do a search. It's going to do, the search is going to be Elon Musk's x.ai. 
It basically does that, gets the information back, and then summarizes the key details and gives us this answer back. So we've got Elon Musk recently announced the creation of a new company focused on artificial intelligence called X.AI. We can see the company was formed after Musk filed paperwork in Nevada. So there's standard information that we can see there. So if I ask it, okay, who is on the team? Interestingly, the search doesn't do a great job here. It doesn't seem to get the names of the people. And some of them are quite famous AI researchers. So that's why I was interested to see, okay, would it be able to get that? It doesn't seem that it has. And that seems to be more to do with the search, not returning it just returns about the first 12 employees from what we can see there. And we don't actually get the names back scrolling through. Yeah, we don't actually get the names back uh, of the people in the context from the search. So in that case, we wouldn't expect this to give us the actual details, but it does use that context to form an answer pretty well. So Elon Musk recently announced Extra AI. The additional team consists of 12 members, including... Musk himself, other members from organizations like OpenAI and DeepMind that specialize in AI research and development, details on specific missions and focus of X.AI are still emerging. All right. So when I ask it, what do they plan to do? So here you can see it's executing the search. Elon Musk team plans, gives us a response back. It does actually get, the, gives us a very similar response to before except now we can see that it's advancing AI capabilities to help understand the nature of the universe, which is their big goal. So that's using it just in a conversational chat bot with memory and with search. So I should point out that like here, I basically didn't have to mention x.ai again. I just said, what do they plan to do? And it knew that I was talking about Elon Musk's x.ai. That's because we've got the memory in there and it's able to use that. So that's the kind of standard chain a lot of people will use with maybe multiple tools or something like that. So you could just take that and use that straight away. Doing something for information retrieval. What I did was just wrote a quick script and went and scraped uh, some articles about x.ai and the x.ai site. So there's not a lot uh, of these. I think it was about seven in total. I can't share the zip file of those. I think just for copyright reasons, I shouldn't be sharing that but they were from places like TechCrunch, X.AI itself. And it's not a huge amount of text. You can see when I bring this in, it's only seven documents that we brought in here. So in this one, we're going to be using Claude 2 for information retrieval. We're going to be looking at just loading this up. So Anthropic, as far as I know, doesn't have a publicly available embedding API. Now, it could be wrong. But I decided to go for the instructor embeddings here. So that's why this notebook actually using a GPU, but I'm actually using the lowest end GPU T4 for this. So you don't need a big GPU to run this. And here you can basically see the instructor embeddings, still probably my favorite embedding that's open source. You can just use as much as you want. I keep meaning to make a video just about instruct embeddings because the way they do it is very cool. I just haven't gotten around to it. Anyway, so we're bringing that in, we're loading that model in, and we're gonna use that with Chroma DB. And I've done videos about this before. We're gonna per persist our little vector database on the disk here, and we're gonna use those instructor embeddings. Now, when we actually make the retriever here, normally you would have seen me use like a retriever of K equals three or something. Here I can go right out to a much bigger one. So I've gone for K equals seven to make sure that we're getting the right answers in there. And don't forget, that's we could go probably even out to close to K equals 70, even more with this, because we've got such a huge context window of 100,000 tokens. We probably don't want to go out that far. There's not a lot to be gained from that, but it is nice to be able to go out to, to seven, I kind of feel is a, is a nice spot. Why don't we want to go out to 100K? The reason why we don't want to go out to 100K is probably just we're going to be wasting tokens. We're wasting money at that point. So the 100K token limit is fantastic, but it's not big enough that you would fit an entire company's data in there, right? That would be millions and millions of tokens. And it's also, it just doesn't make sense for speed and for cost to try and always stuff everything into the context window. 
you could play around with this yourself and scrape some things. And you could actually probably stuff all seven of those articles or all seven of those scrapes into the context window and do it that way. But if you're going to be asking lots of questions across that, you're probably wasting money by doing that. So it's not something that I would recommend that you do. So in this case, I'm going for a context. We're going to basically put in seven contexts in there. So after that, you can see that next up, I'm just loading up the chat anthropic model. We've basically got the temperature set to zero here and we're defining our chain here. So this is just going to be a retrieval QA chain. We're stuffing everything in because we've got such a long context window. There's no need to do anything but stuff in this. There's no point in doing multiple passes or something. But we pass in our retriever. In this case, I'm doing return source documents equals true. Don't have to do that. I'm not really using them for anything here. And then we can basically run it and see our outputs. So when I ask it, okay, what did Elon Musk announce? It comes back with Elon Musk announced the launch of a new artificial intelligence company called X.AI. A very nice, succinct answer and clearly answering what we asked there. Okay, this time now when I try and ask it who is on the team, this is the kind of answer that I think is really interesting to get from them. So you can see here that we've got this, I apologize, but I do not actually know the full list of people on the XAI team. Based on the information provided, the context mentions some notable members like Elon Musk, and then it goes on to actually list the people out that are mentioned, or at least some of them that are mentioned on the site. It also mentions Dan Hendricks advises the team. However, a full list of team members is not provided. So that's certainly given us better than what we got from just doing the search before. When we ask it, okay, what is he going to call his GPT model? If you remember, Elon was talking about the truth GPT. And sure enough here, it basically says, based on the context provided, it seems Elon Musk intends to call his GPT model truth GPT. In an interview from April, 2023, he said, and then it basically gives some quotes. And the quotes seem to be, accurate. When I checked them, there's one coming up about China. Uh, and I checked that. And actually, that's a, a real quote from him. Who's going to be CEO? Okay, based on the context provided, it appears that Musk will be CEO of X.AI. The announcement states, our team is led by Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. Where is the company going to be based? Now, this is a, a kind of question I ask because it deliberately doesn't say that as far as I know. So here we get I apologize, but I do not have enough information in the provided context to definitively say where X.AI will be based. The context mentions that X.AI is recruiting engineers and researchers in the Bay Area, and most AI development has been concentrated on Silicon Valley. So I think this bit, it's adding itself. Now, the Bay Area, stuff like that, that makes sense. But then it also, I put, deliberately had some articles in there about Musk and China. And you can see that, so it brings that up as a location. So it talks about that he's traveled to China, but it says, you know, however, there's no explicit statement about where XAI's headquarters or main office will be located. This is a really good step forward in getting out information from the context of where it's prepared to tell you that, hey, I don't know the exact answer for that. Here's some things that might be the answer, but they're not, there's no sort of 100% proof in the context that you've given me of, of that answer. So I think this is where this thing really shines. Final one, what did Musk say about China and AI? And we can see based on the context provided, Elon Musk said that China is interested in working cooperatively on AI uh, regulation. Specifically, specifically, he said, China is definitely interested in working in a cooperative international framework for AI regulation. Now I searched this out and this quote does exist from him in some of the articles. So it's good to know that it's doing that. Beyond that, I don't know exactly what else Musk said about you know, China and AI. The context talks about Musk's recent trip to China and meetings with government officials there, as well as China's recent interim measures on AI. But it does not provide direct quotes from Musk on anything else related to China and AI. Again, this is really useful if you're looking to get something that is prepared to tell you, hey, I don't know. For example, with ChatGPT or the 3.5 Turbo model, it will often just make up things in this. Now, I'm not saying that Claude 2 doesn't make up things, but on the whole, it seems like the responses that we're getting here are more consistent with this kind of thing. 
Anyway, have a play with, with the notebook. If you've got access to the API, have a play with the notebook. You can try it out. I might make one more video just showing you some of the reasoning of what they're doing. So as always, if you're interested in these kind of topics, I'm going to go back to doing some of these with open source models as well. Please click like and subscribe. If you've got any questions or anything, please put them in the comments. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.